is Jingdezhen in eastern China. And this is the historic Dutch city of Delft. This fabled place for centuries was a beating heart of both China's and the world's porcelain industry. Here in the Netherlands, it was precisely that lust for porcelain that would spur the country's own ceramics trade, known as Delft Blue. I'll meet the masters keeping this rich craft alive. Oh, oh you need muscles yeah. to do this. Yeah, 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 you can see. Yeah. <laughs> Welcome to Crossing Cultures. Join us as we explore the ancient ties that bind both China and Europe. Mention Jingdezhen in China and people immediately think of porcelain, in particular Qinghua Zi, the famous blue and white kind. Making it is a complicated process that involves 72 steps. The potter begins by positioning the clay on the wheel. It must be absolutely central, otherwise it will wobble. Then he shapes the size of the vessel. He does this gently, even though he appears to be concentrating all his strength and energy into his hands. May I try? First wet your hands. Place your left hand outside and your right hand inside. Slowly move them together, then apart. And here, we've got the bowl. Once the basic shape is achieved, the next craftsman takes over. The step is called trimming and involves removing any excess clay. The thickness has to be very precise. An error no greater than a tenth of a millimeter is permitted. When it comes to glazing, the vessel is immersed quite slowly, although it's removed surprisingly quickly. The speed is dictated by the object's shape. The craftsman relies on experience to determine this. A distinctive feature of blue and white porcelain is its elegant underglaze. The design incorporates some of the traditional Chinese ink and wash painting techniques, such as fading and tapering. Everything painted on the surface has unique symbolism, usually associated with some form of blessing. To produce creative works, you need to get out and discover and appreciate the beauty of life. Without such input, there can be no output, because artistic expression is a highly personal thing, a manifestation of one's tastes and one's understanding of life. Mm. So here we've got traditionally made blue and white porcelain cup. Paul, what you got there? For around 400 years, the Dutch city of Delft has been doing wondrous things with clay. Inspired by the porcelain arriving from China, potters here soon started making their own blue and white ceramics. Today, Royal Delft is the only factory left in the city. Hybe is showing me one of the first and most important steps in the production process, the casting. Hi, what are we doing today? Uh, we are going to make uh, the skirt of the Proud Mary. Okay, uh, can I have a go? Yeah, <laughs> you can. <laughs> yeah. This is the clay. The clay comes out of this tube. Right. If you put this handle like this, yeah. Okay. it goes, you see? Wish me luck. Yeah, good luck, mate. <laughs> is that too... Yeah, easy, 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. easy, easy, in the middle. And what happens yeah. if you go too quickly? Then you can have air inside. Oh, we don't want that. No, no, we don't want it, no. You're a sort of an expert. Uh, beginner's luck. <laughs> stop, okay, stop, stop, stop. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, stop. A little drip bit. Yeah. Okay, beautiful. And then we close this. Right. Once filled, the mold is topped off. Step on. The skirt is then left then for 15 this. minutes. So maybe After that, like the this. remaining liquid clay is tipped out, is leaving like behind that? a yeah. crust. And uh, now you, t you turn it over. All the way? Yeah, all the way. Yeah, yeah. Easy. Okay, you sure? Yeah, yeah, I'm Am sure. Am I doing this correctly? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then it comes out, you see? What is still liquid goes out. Right. And the crust will stay. 
Hi, what makes a good Delft putter? If you are holding it too tight, it, it breaks. So you need to be sensitive and, and technical. Ah, After being okay, emptied right and turned the right way up, the skirt is left for an hour. And it's then ready to take Go. out. Yeah, easy. Oh, yeah. Right. wow, look at that. There it comes, you see? And this is the same to the back. There we are. There he is. So yeah. no, now we have to put him on the, on the plate here. Okay. And then he can dry. This is the sensitive part. If you push too hard, you will break it. So take a full hand. Yeah, yeah that's it. This should be good. Beautiful. And now just let it dry till it is dry like this. Right. You just sort of look like an expert already. Oh, thank you. Thank you too. <laughs> Once dry, the pottery is sponged. This crucial step removes any irregularities and defines the final shape. The object is then decorated with special paint containing cobalt. This is a highly skilled job that takes around a decade or so to master. It's then glazed and fired. This is the magic part. A chemical reaction turns the black paint into the iconic blue. Today, genuine Delft can fetch a small fortune. Thankfully, Co is on hand to tell me how to distinguish the fake from the real. Co, we have the skirt of a proud Mary here. Why did the Dutch potters start copying Chinese porcelain? Well, we started importing uh, Chinese porcelain at the end of the 16th century, but it got quite a boost when the East Indian Training Company was founded. And that was competition for the local pottery, so they already started to imitate it, improve the process of the local uh, pottery. And then due to domestic problems into China, the, um, the import staggered, and that's where they had a chance to, to really grow. And at a certain moment, there were about 34 factories uh, in Delft. And why was it so popular? It was very delicate and Europe could not make porcelain. So in Delft they started to mix the clay in a different way. They were able to make it thinner. The result looked a lot like the Chinese porcelain. That's why people call it Dutch of Delft porcelain, but in fact it's earthenware. The decorations were very refined and the colour blue was new. So how do you tell the difference between what's fake and what's real? Yeah, the easiest is you would have another skirt uh, beside it and you could compare it and then you will notice that the details will all be a little different. You will notice that the shades of the blue are different because we paint by hand. If you use more water you get a lighter blue, less water is a darker blue and um, of course you can also tell by looking on the bottom. The name Delft of course is included. You will find the initials of the painter on the piece, a dating code and this is limited edition. This is number 60 and we're going to make totally 150 of these. And each piece is unique? Each piece is unique. There are never two which are identical. OK. And if somebody uses that trademark, what, what will happen? Then we take legal steps. OK. May I? Yes, of course. Don't drop it. Uh, OK, <laughs> no. It's absolutely tremendous. Thank it's you. It's absolutely beautiful. Thank you. No, thank you. You're welcome. The success or failure of all the work done here in Jingdezhen depends on the expertise of the craftsmen supervising the kill. Years of experience guide them so that they add the wood at just the right time and in the right quantities. They do this day and night non-stop for several days. Since the heat inside the kiln isn't dispersed evenly, different types of pottery are put in different places inside, according to the amount of heat they require. For example, blue and white porcelain needs the hottest place, closest to the kiln's door. These two holes are the eyes of the kiln. You can tell the temperature by observing how they change color. To achieve the best, most glossy effect, pine wood is burned in the kiln. The reason is that at a temperature of 1,300 degrees, it emits oil. When it comes into contact with the glaze on a vessel, the pine oil creates a rich, lustrous, polished-looking surface. It took seven days and the maximum temperature of 1,280 degrees, and we've got this lovely, traditionally made blue and white porcelain vase. And this is a goodbye from me here, from Jingdezhen. Thanks, Igor. Well, I have a genuine Delft teacup and a finished Proud Mary, and you can understand why they're so proud of it. Anyway, as you probably guessed, that's it for this edition of Crossing Cultures. Until the next time, thanks for watching. Thank you.